Today we're going to be making a cross between a looper and a delay that's inspired by Robert Fripp and Heimbach using only free software and plugins. The doll I'm using is called Bespoke Synth, and as this tutorial relies upon several built-in modules that are to my knowledge unique to it, I wouldn't recommend trying to follow it in, say, Ableton. Luckily, it's free and still updated. I've linked it in the description. To start off with, we're going to want to go into our Audio Effects menu and select Input from the drop-down menu. Setting our number of channels to 1 and 2 if you have a two-channel audio interface. And in the words of many guitar demoers before me, here's my clean tone. Nothing special, it's just an acoustic guitar that I've wired up with a contact mic from Amazon, going through a Fender Mustang LT25 modeling amplifier, going into a really noisy mixing board that's doing it absolutely no favors. However, we're not here for clean tones today. We're here to mess with time itself. To do that, what we're going to need to do is go into our audio effects menu and select a looper module. Rerouting our input into the looper and enabling right to see that this is in fact a very standard looper module. Let's clear that because I will go insane if I have to listen to it. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to automate the clearing of that. To do this, we're going to need to go into our modulators menu, select LFO, and then switch it to a square. And we're going to put the output of that LFO into our clear button here, setting the low to one, high to zero, and our length to basically instantaneous. Now, this presents us with a problem. Because you can hear my guitar going through just fine. We can't hear the loop. If we were, say, a toucan decide to sell very sugary cereal to children, this would be a massive problem. Luckily, we're an audio engineer, and we can fix this with one module. The module is the feedback module from the audio effects menu. We're going to reroute our output from our, actually what we're going to do is make a send by shift clicking on the output of the looper and sending the feedback out, or sending the second output of that send into our feedback module, then selecting the, the feedback out of the feedback module and putting it into the input of the looper module. We're also going to set our LFO looper and feedback interval to two measures. And before I forget, giving us a healthy amount of feedback from our delay. And not forgetting to actually enable my guitar. As you can hear, what we've essentially created is a two measure long delay pedal with a very, very long decay. This is very musically useful. Now where stuff gets interesting 
is adding a tape emulation into the feedback loop, allowing us to make the repeats kind of disappear into the ether. So for that, we're going to choose the free tape emulator, Chow Tape Model, developed by Chow Dury DSP. And we're going to put that in the middle of our feedback path. Now, we want to make this sound pretty crappy, since it's only um, affecting the, re the repeats. To do this, we're going to under-bias it significantly. Not touch thickness or gap too much, because that, that reduces the volume too much, as I found. Excuse me, very sorry. Giving it the wrong azimuth. And adding some wow and flutter. At a pretty low rate for the flutter. And a pretty low rate for the wow. Now let's see how that sounds. Increase the volume coming from Chow Tape Model real quick. Increasing that to about 1.5. And I'm going to enable the filters with this little power button right here. Low cut, or sorry, high cut of roughly 12 kilohertz. You can do it to your, whatever you find is most musically interesting to you. And now, since I haven't used the bass strings in a while. Give it about two decibels. Enabling the chew parameter, which I believe I've changed my mind. I don't want the chew. Let's enable degrade instead. Give it 0.19 and clear that. Saying and clearing this is a pretty complicated endeavor, because you have to set your delay amount to zero as well. 
is hitting the clear button up there. So now we just wait for the buffers to run out, set our delay amount back up, at, back up to where it was. Let's give that an envelope. And try out the grid. Pretty stinking good so far. Now something the Chase Bliss blooper does very well is it has a reverse functionality. Unfortunately, the reverse functionality in Bespoke Synth's blooper is very scuffed and results in this weird clicking noise that is very, very unmusical. So instead what we're going to do is use another VST called Dubstation. This one's also free. Not Dragonfly Room Reaver, that was a misclick. Dub Station, there we go. And what I'm going to do is give us another send off of this one by again hitting shift and click at the same time. And bouncing that into Dub Station 1.5. Give us a 100% wet mix. And. Let's go for a one quarter notes delay length. Now, let's see how that sounds. I scuffed a slide there. My apologies. Next, what we're going to do is open Dove Station up again, toggle our reverse functionality, since that exposes it to our MIDI. Actually, it appears that toggling that is unnecessary because it's just all exposed by default. Regardless, our next step is to go into modulators, spawn another LFO, making this one a... One second. Excuse me, more indigestion. Give that a half note, square. I'm putting that into the reverse slider. And again, setting our low to one and our high to zero length to, eh, let's call it 250, 255, that will do. Actually, you want more than that. Yeah, that will do.
I could listen to that all day. And like that, we have completed the basic gist of this assembly. What we can do next is make this all prefab so that we can access it later without having to build this all again. So for that, we're going to go into Other, select Prefab from the drop-down menu, and just drag everything into it. Give ourselves a little bit of space to remember all the routings, because this is absolutely something you can play around with. Misclick. And we're going to save that as auto reverse. Or save it as whatever you want. Save it as Nancy. I don't care. I'm not your boss. Now, things I'd suggest playing around with first are the length of your reversing LFO and the tempo up here, of course as well as absolutely screwing around with the tape modeler and what all of its parameters do. I've used this plugin for a, like a year now, and I still don't know what all the parameters do. I'm not sure if that's because it's good or just because it's not very well documented. Or because I haven't read the documentation, who knows? Now, something you can also do is if you own a higher quality um, tape simulation, such as the audio things, um, or sorry, the, I want to say audio damage things reels. Um, that might be a better quality tape simulation plugin if, you, if you're wanting to go for the super lo-fi sound that I am. You can also probably find a record simulation VST as well if you want to pay money for that. But I think what I'm going to do next is... Um, oh, right. Uh, if you like this, do be sure to like and subscribe as it tells me that there is interest in this sort of content. Now what I think I'm going to do is just play this out because this is more or less the rest of the... this is more or less the end of the tutorial. Have an excellent rest of your day. Thank you.